Barry's planning committee meetings have become ground zero for the battle between status quo and change. Developers want to build as many units as possible as the demand has skyrocketed due to the shortage caused by the pandemic. On the other hand, residents do not want their neighborhoods and lives changed due to the influx of new residents. And councillors are doing everything they can to find the balance to avoid residents' anger in the election year. In a recent planning committee meeting, the council got into the nitty-gritties of residential planning. Councillor Gary Harvey made a presentation to address a proposed development in his ward that residents are not happy about. Harvey wants to allow only 34 units on a 1.5 acre land on which the developer first proposed to build 88 units. The timeline of the project is also an indication of the long time it takes to get the project approved as the housing crisis continues to worsen. During a neighborhood meeting in September 2020, Encore Group proposed to build 88 units in the residential zone by demolishing five houses. After strong opposition from residents, the number of units were cut down to 72 in early 2021. But the residents continued to protest even the reduced scale of the project. The scope was eventually reduced to 46 units only. And now, Ward Councillor Harvey wants only 34 units on the land. The developers are not willing to entertain any reduction in scope and the dialogues between the residents and developers have broken down. In his presentation, Harvey proposed the three-story development instead of four and a half stories with a rooftop garden. During the question and answer session, Councillor Thompson said Harvey is keeping the features from the developer's plan that his residents like and changing things that they don't. Thompson also said it should be give and take. On the other hand, Ward 1 councillor Ripma, who faced similar anti-development pressure from his constituents, supported Harvey's amendments. In the end, the council adopted Deputy Mayor Ward's suggestion to get a staff report to see how the development will look after incorporating councillor Harvey's recommendation. Let me just call up all the addresses here, but it's uh, 407, 411, 413, 417, and 419 Maple View Drive. This was deferred by motion 21P34 on December 7th. I did defer this um, and uh, because I was very much anticipating that uh, some good discussions were going to take place uh, between the applicant and the uh, uh, the residents along with their planner that they have retained. Um, unfortunately, the discussions didn't uh, quite uh, come to fruition the way I would have expected or anticipated uh, because uh, I was advised that right off the bat uh, at the beginning of those discussions, uh, they were advised by the applicant that uh, the, uh, the biggest uh, concerns that they had with the heightened density um, was not something that they were willing to discuss at all and that it was a, a, a non-stop issue when it came to that. Um, I then, because nobody had reached out to me, I then reached out to the applicant myself too. And I too, uh, last Friday was given the exact same response that uh, they, they did not wanna have any discussions about the key point of heightened density. Um, like, I mean, the residents know something's gonna get built here. I know something's gonna get built here. Um, and to be quite honest with you, this area does need to be redeveloped. It's uh, very, very old uh, bungalows um, and uh, a new build will definitely um, make the area uh, much more attractive. Um, it's just a matter of what's appropriate to be built, to build, to conform and, and, and create a good transition uh, with the area because this is a, uh, a low density area uh, surrounded predominantly by bungalows, especially on the Maple View side. Um, and especially uh, when I spent that afternoon knocking on doors uh, to the, to the uh, 42 uh, homes that are uh, the closest in proximity that would have the most impact with this new uh, development. And, and it was quite clear that everybody I spoke to had concerns other than one resident. Uh, and it just goes to show you the amount of uh, concern that uh, this type of heightened density has caused uh, to the uh, the neighbors uh, in the area. Um, it's, in my opinion, not a, a good transition when you're going from low density all the way up to high density because they're requesting uh, 72 uh, units per hectare 
um, and it's not an intensification corridor. If I could get uh, our IT people to put up uh, the, sh the video clip that I sent. So what I wanna do is uh, virtually bring you along Mapleview Drive, uh, just Obviously, everybody's been through the area at some point in time. However, some it may have been uh, quite a distance. As you see, it starts off with uh, commercial on both sides at the corner. And then you've got uh, some two stories on the north, a, a large house that's turned into some office space. And then as you go further along on the south side, it uh, begins with uh, a series of bungalows. And on the north side uh, is people's backyards uh, backing onto uh, to Mapleview Drive. The uh, proposed development is on the, uh, the left-hand side of the screen on the south side. It would uh, cover uh, five of the bungalows uh, in the area that we just passed. Uh, as we move up, you'll uh, see that uh, it's predominantly made up of bungalows and then you get into some two stories, however, not directly on Mapleview Drive. And then off to the right-hand side, we'll be passing uh, two churches. Uh, and you'll see that it's very open, low density area. And again, on the left side, uh, on the south, uh, you've got a series of two stories and some back splits whose backyards back onto Maple View. And then as we hit Marcellus, uh, we've got a plaza on the north side. And on the uh, south side here are uh, the closest townhouses uh, that are on a street just off of Maple View. And then as we pan around, uh, you will see that is our largest building that we have in the area. That is uh, over 250 uh, meters uh, to the west of the uh, proposed development. Um, that is a seniors building at three stories and uh, abuts uh, to the side and behind uh, a series of uh, two story towns. And you'll see there's quite a large setback at the rear uh, because that's where their parking lot is located. And then we Sorry, were, I couldn't quite hear you. That was Siri talking to me. <laughs> As we know, Siri's always listening. As we uh, come back, uh, we'll get back to the, uh, the proposed development here in a moment. Um, but as you can see, it's all uh, predominantly two-story homes uh, in the side streets off of Maple View. And then as we pan, uh, we're hitting Redfern Drive now. And as we pan in behind, you will uh, see the, uh, the homes that are in behind the subject lands that uh, are, are sitting on much larger uh, properties. It's an older, more mature area that is still on uh, septic and, uh, and they have ditches opposed to uh, city sewers. Um, and then as you pan in, so this development would cover the, uh, the five homes just to the rear of what we can see on our screen now. And as you can see, especially that one uh, property uh, to the right, their uh, pool is literally right at the rear fence yard, uh, which would be abutting up to the, uh, the proposed development. And as you can see across the road, you've got the, all those row of two-story homes uh, with their backyards. And with the proposed development being four and a half stories at the front with rooftop terraces, uh, that would cause a significant privacy issue for those people across the road. And as you can see, as we pan out, uh, this is a very uh, low density, uh, single and semi-detached uh, ward. Uh, and uh, projects like this, there's lots of areas that this would be suitable. And as you can see, Essa Road is one of them. And, uh, and also too, with it being a secondary intensification corridor where the target uh, is a minimum of 50 hect uh, units per hectare, it would be much more appropriate for a development of this size to be out on that secondary intensification corridor. And I will just get you to uh, flip over to the PowerPoint quickly if I could. Great, thank you. And we can go to the next slide. So here, here's a uh, shot, and this uh, this is an exact slide taken from uh, the public meeting one of the uh, the residents uh, had used in his presentation uh, that shows uh, the view from the uh, south. 
and uh, the uh, rectangle that's highlighted is the five subject properties uh, where they want to uh, build the proposed 46 units. Um, the current project is uh, constrained of um, two blocks, a four and a half story back to back or stack towns, I should say, at the front. And then at the rear, there were three blocks um, of uh, towns uh, that were three stories tall for a total of 46 units. If we could hit the next slide, please. Um, this, this may, it's fairly close to scale. It might not be exactly close to scale. However, this is the exact renderings that were provided in the applicant's uh, paperwork uh, that would demonstrate potentially what the, uh, the change in site lines for those residents on Redfern uh, would be, um, even with my proposed amendments, to be quite honest with you. Next slide, please. And then as we take a look from, uh, from the, uh, the opposite side, looking south across Maple View, um, you can see the, uh, the five subject uh, houses, which uh, starts with the third one uh, to the west of Redfern Avenue there. Uh, next slide, please. And with my amendments, uh, this is potentially what the sight lines would be changed to. Um, shortly, I will propose some amendments that uh, will bring the front block down to the, uh, the allowable RM2, which is uh, 10 meters, um, which would still allow them to build three-story towns uh, along the front uh, and the same at the rear, um, which is a much more um, uh, responsible transition when we're dealing with uh, bungalows on either side. Next slide, please. And this is more of a, a slide that would show the height variance uh, when it comes to, uh, and this is exact photos of the bung of bungalows and the uh, the backslip that's uh, back split that's on the right, that would show the uh, the height transition um, between their homes and what's being proposed. Uh, and this is the uh, the lower the three uh, uh, story block that I will be proposing in my amendment, whereas their approach. Uh, proposing in their uh, proposal to be at four and a half stories with rooftop terraces, which is just such a dramatic difference and provides no transition from low density and immediately takes it to a high density uh, development. Next slide, please. And again, here's another shot that shows uh, a, a more appropriate transition that occurred uh, many, many years ago. Uh, I've uh, personally been a resident in this ward for almost 23 years now. And uh, I know when this uh, building was built, uh, I don't recall anybody uh, creating any uh, concerns because you've got a transition from the three stories with appropriate setbacks uh, with a two story adjacent to it. Next slide, please. Now, this is an example uh, of some uh, townhomes that we have uh, just further up on Essa Road, uh, just a little bit north of Mapleton. And this is an example that with my amendment, bringing the front blocks down to three stories, that you can still build stack townhouses if you so wish. Uh, these units have been there uh, since uh, about uh, the early 90s, I believe, because uh, I know a friend of mine that lived in there moons ago and there was literally just farm fields around it. But it is a, it is a good example, the fact that you don't have to go four and a half stories to be able to build appropriate sized back or stack townhouses. Well, Maple View is not an intensification quarter as I've probably mentioned a few times already. Um, and it's the proposed application is 310 meters away from Essa Road, which is a secondary intensification corridor. And as I mentioned earlier, if this project was on Essa Road, the dialogue would be very different with the proposed density of 72 units um, on a secondary intensification corridor. However, 72 units on Maple View that is not a secondary intensification corridor beside bungalows is not smart planning in my opinion. Uh, this entire area is zoned R RM1, whereas RM2 is being requested with a whole host of special provisions as the project doesn't even come close to meeting any of the requirements in the RM2 zoning, uh, which uh, pr permits a uh, maximum density of 40 units per hectare and a maximum height of 10 meters 
whereas they're requesting 12 and a half meters to bring it to four and a half stories at 72 units per hectare. Under the current OP, uh, this is designated a residential area and there, in the uh, third draft, there is no proposed changes uh, to this area as it will remain a residential area. Uh, we all want more homes built in Barrie um, and we know it's much needed to help the stock and hopefully bring down the housing boom that we're currently in, but we can't do this at all costs to our residents just to meet growth targets outside of an intensification corridor, especially when an application like this far exceeds the prescribed density levels with them being almost twice what's allowed under RM2. We can see previous applications where we've had disapproval similar to this from residents and applicants have been very open and come back with significant revisions like we saw in Ward 5 on Miller Drive where the proposal went from a series of townhomes to a series of single uh, dwelling homes, satisfying the concerns of the residents. And actually uh, about a month ago, we also had a condo tower on uh, Bayfield and Sophia uh, that went from 34 stories all the way down to 12 stories because of those same types of concerns. Um, in a presentation uh, that staff uh, conducted uh, back in January of 2020, it spoke of various density levels uh, for each built form with townhouses being targeted uh, for a density between 42 and 54 units per hectare. Um, schedule one of the city's official current official plan um, specifically identifies Essa Road as a secondary corridor with a target of 50 units per hectare, which is a significant uh, variance in the density from this application that's not on an intensification corridor. Uh, the requested density uh, would set a new bar for levels along Maple View Drive as no other development previously approved of this sort comes close to this density. And even when we look at the, uh, the large parcel of land that we did have um, a neighborhood meeting on in the uh, north east corner of Maple View and Essa, which is a large 25 acre parcel, even under the new OP, that is still being designated as a mid density area. Um, and that's right at the corner of this major intersection that is part of the secondary intensification corridor. Um, in, in my opinion, I don't think we're really following the OP uh, with uh, considering uh, applications of this magnitude, especially when we're, we're dealing with a low density area and we're considering uh, approving a high density build. It just doesn't fit and it does not follow our current OP and it's not following our potential new draft OP that we just discussed a little while ago. So as a result, I have a series of uh, amendments uh, that I'm going to, going to propose. Uh, I'm gonna bring them all forward as one. Uh, this was circulated to everybody ahead of time. Um, and I think this will uh, be a good compromise that will bring it from a low density into a mid density with a much better transition from the two built forms and will still allow the developer to be able to build significant volumes of towns, however, at three stories instead of the four and a half that would tower over the neighborhood. Um, so I will go through them uh, one by one. Um, section A, uh, that piece is uh, not changing at all. Um, section B of the, uh, the recommended motion uh, would be to uh, change the, uh, the permitted landscape open space lot area to 35%, whereas 35% is the minimum requirement. Um, leaving C alone, permitting the, uh, the maximum lot coverage uh, area of 50%, which 35% is the maximum. So that gives them an additional 15% uh, over what's allowed. Um, D, I'm also leaving alone, which would permit the gross floor area uh, percentage of the lot area at 120%, whereas the maximum is only 60%. Uh, this provides them with uh, a lot of additional wiggle room uh, with any changes that uh, would be required uh, with these amendments. And then also uh, with F, 
would be to uh, permit a maximum density of 53 units per hectare, whereas the maximum of 40 to 53 units per hectare are permitted. Uh, G, uh, that one's not changing at all to uh, permit uh, the required uh, amenity space uh, areas can be provided as unconsolidated, whereas consolidated amenities are normally required. And then I am adding H uh, to permit a rear yard setback of 10 meters, which is uh, something that was agreed upon in the, uh, in the meeting and is contained in the literature. Um, from IPS that uh, we all received. Uh, I permit a minimum west side setback of 17.4 meters as identified in the current site plan. Uh, that is staying in, in uh, sync with uh, what the current site plan uh, shows for that site, uh, setback. And J to permit a minimum east side setback of 14.6 meters as identified in the current site plan. And again, that's keeping in, in uh, check with uh, their current uh, setback in their, in their proposal. K, the perimeter fence be a minimum of 1.8 meters and a maximum of 2.4 meters with the rear fence being a minimum of 2.14 meters and that the fence will remain the ownership of the future condominium board. This was something that was discussed, uh, not contained in his literature, but this was discussed in the first meeting and uh, seemed that uh, it was something that uh, the, ap the applicant was definitely uh, okay with. Um, then I, that the rear second story decks on the traditional townhouse units be a maximum deck area of 2.55 square meters uh, which would be 1.5 meters by 1.7 meters, along with a rear yard setback of 8.5 meters. And again, that's something that's agreed upon in, uh, in the literature from IPS. Um, M, that any stacked or back-to-back -back townhouses not have a deck any larger than 28.5 square meters, whereas 12 square meters is the maximum permitted. Uh, and again, that's giving them more than twice the allowable for any decks that would be off uh, stacked or back-to-back -back towns on the property. Um, that the rooftop terraces not be permitted on the subject properties. And obviously I'm bringing that one forward because that, that was a really big concern from the residents in regards to uh, privacy issues, even from the residents on the opposite side of Mapleview whose backyards would be facing uh, the front area of these rooftop terraces. Um, in, in my opinion, uh, these amendments um, provide uh, a very similar built form to what they've proposed, other than bringing the front blocks from four and a half stories down to three stories. Um, it's still large at three stories and 53 units per hectare, um, which will still allow them to build up to 34 units as the subject properties are 0.64 of a hectare. Uh, this provides a lot of uh, movement uh, with the gross floor area um, being double what is allowed under the uh, zoning. Um, this will create a more appropriate uh, transition from low to mid, mid density, opposed to low to high density without a transition. And actually that's the end of my comments. Uh, so I will uh, obviously uh, available for any uh, questions if uh, members of council have it. Okay, just a couple of things of clarification <clears throat> before we get into discussing this, uh, this amendment, Councillor Harvey. So I think you'd added a new paragraph six. Uh, did you wanna just introduce that as well, please? Good catch, Mayor Lehman. I, I, unfortunately, I printed it out on uh, black and white, so it uh, it sh only shows gray instead of red the way it was. Uh, yes, uh, to add a, a paragraph six, that as many trees as possible on the subject lands be retained that are in good health in accordance with the uh, City of Barrie policies and approved by city staff, um, DEV 026-21 and file D30-003-2020. Thanks, Mayor Lehman. Um, I have a few, a uh, last one, and then I'll leave it. It, it. it was pretty much to that. Um, 
the new um, proposals. Um, through you to the mover, um, you've made comments of they agreed upon like a 10 meter setback and 17.4 meters. I, I don't really, I guess what I'm saying is you've, you've asked them to reduce their density, their heights, but hold the things obviously you like, like the permitted setbacks, seven meters in the rear, uh, the rear setbacks are seven meters. So like introducing all these amendments, it, it's drastically different to the proposal. Would it not be better just to not vote in favor of the staff report? Because I just can't see somebody submitting a plan and you keeping what's interested to your residents and changing everything else. It's they give and take, right? Where it's just, it doesn't look that way. So I was just curious, you know, if, if they held to the official plan, they would be allowed to build at seven meters, not at 10. They, they were doing that as a compromise because they had the height and, you know, the further away, the less impactful the height is. So I'm just curious, and then I'll leave that to hear some other comments. Sorry, was that a question to Councillor Harvey, Councillor Thompson, or is that your comment? Better to vote against it than try and amend it in this way. Yeah, it was It was pretty much a question, just like okay. to, to try to amend it. Like, I just was curious why, like, he had, uh, Councillor Harvey had kind of stated that he really didn't have much conversation back and forth with the, the defer of this. So, you know, to look at the amount of amendments and we did receive them, you know, 19 minutes before the meeting, it's hard to see what the impact is, you know, of what all these amendments would actually do. I, I know he showed some drawings and stuff, but it would be nice to see exactly or to, to absorb it. And I was just curious one, why to put all the amendments and not just vote it down on the staff report. So maybe you can explain. Councillor Harvey. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Lehman. Uh, through you uh, to Councillor Thompson. Um, I'll be quite honest with you. We can vote it down. Doesn't uh, it really doesn't matter to me uh, to be quite honest with you. What I was trying to do is to still be able to get this to move forward. Um, you're concerned about the uh, the setback. So these amendments actually don't change the the footprint spaces where the uh, the blocks of towns could or would be. Um, and that's why I have uh, introduced the, uh, the the side setbacks that are actually exactly what's in the current uh, site plan that they've put forward. And then the uh, the rear setback was a discussion that occurred, um, and and that document documentation was on the circulation list this week. Um, that indicates uh, that that was one of the things that uh, they could agree on with the residents. The only thing out of these amendments that couldn't be agreed upon was was the height and the density. Um, the rest of these amendments don't uh, don't really change the. Uh, Okay, my screen went blank for a minute. I thought I lost this. Um, the uh, the rest of it does not change the actual uh, layout of the site plan, um, and it's still because we did not make any changes with the gross floor area. We're still allowing twice as what's allowable, um, and that gives them significant uh, movement to be able to make the appropriate modifications. Essentially, with this. They could very easily build four blocks of three-story towns and the setbacks wouldn't need to be moved at all. Um, and whether they decide to have the product as a stacked or if they decide to change it to a back-to-back, -back, there is more than enough room with this amendment to be able to accomplish that if that's what they wish to build. Just to follow up, Marilyn. So what, what my concern is like, they've, they've agreed to with the residents for the 10 meter setback, but they also had a higher density and much higher height. So you've asked them to basically go back, which they're going to have to, you know, 
redesign and everything because you've lowered the densities. The if right now they could build at seven meter rear setback, correct? Like the 10 meter was a compromise, but they could build at seven meters because basically they're gonna have to, with these amendments and the changing here, it's almost gonna be a new application, you know, to not from the beginning, but like a, a new design. So do you have a fear that if they agreed to this, but they wouldn't agree to some of their compromise that they were trying, you know, to give and take with the residents. So maybe that's to staff or that they could build at seven meters that is permitted under the building permit or uh, bylaw right now. Under the zoning, uh, Ms. Banfield? Uh, sorry, under the zone. Sorry, I don't know if you heard me call on you, Ms. Banfield, but uh, I think Councillor Thompson's looking for that answer. Sorry, my apologies. Yeah, I was ahead. looking for my, all my, <laughs> I'm like, where's my mute? Uh, I'm mute. Uh, correct. Um, and, and just on that uh, item that uh, Councillor Tom, Thompson raises is that, yeah, the zoning right now would permit them to build at a seven meter di uh, setback, but it wouldn't allow them to build townhouses or stack townhouses at any kind of density. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a give and take, I suppose. Um, but uh, the comment that I was going to make on this one is, this one has kind of bothered me from the beginning because um, of the lack of fit in the neighborhood. Um, to the one side, we have um, two houses, uh, and to the other side, we have five or six. Um, and this is kind of in the middle, and we have no sense of what is to happen with those two houses on the one side and the four or five houses on the other. Um, so it seems to me that if we're you know, serious about planning, then we ought to be thinking about uh, you know, what's, what's the whole street going to look like when we're all finished, and how do we make that happen? Um, and I don't think, um, this addresses that um, at all. So that's my uh, big concern. And I think um, Councillor Harvey um, raises really good questions because um, I think we have that same situation in every one of our wards where we have existing uh, one story, two story houses. Um, and is it appropriate to put um, a four story building right in the middle of it? Um, and recognize that, you know, we are looking at intensification, um, but I, it's, in my view, I think we have to do intensification and we have to do it right. Um, and it needs to fit into the neighborhood. Um, and when you look at the pictures that uh, Councillor Harvey uh, demonstrated, uh, you see nothing there that is higher than three stories, um, all in that area. Um, so um, it seems to me that that's the kind of context that this, this proposal fits into. And I think um, when I look at Councillor Harvey's proposed amendment, I think that's what exactly he's trying to do is to try to make it fit um, much better than what the proposal was. And he's um, listened to the neighborhood and tried to um, figure out uh, what is a reasonable uh, development uh, scenario, um, as opposed to what the developer might be asking for. Because um, the neighbors have to live with it forever, the developer moves on. Um, so my inclination at this moment is, yeah, we could turn it down um, and just vote against uh, approval altogether. But I'm not sure that that really moves the, 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 the ball forward. I, I'm much more inclined to um, go with the amendments and um, see where that takes us because I think it gives us um, it, it gives the developer a, a real sense of this is what uh, what council is thinking about and uh, considers to be appropriate in this area. So um, I, I'm 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 I think that the compromise that uh, the councillor has provided is is a reasonable one. Um, and, and just on that. Uh, item that uh, Councillor Tom, 
Thompson raises is that, yeah, the zoning right now would permit them to build at a seven meter di uh, setback, but it wouldn't allow them to build townhouses or stack townhouses at any kind of density. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a give and take, I suppose. Um, but uh, the comment that I was going to make on this one is, this one has kind of bothered me from the beginning because um, of the lack of fit in the neighborhood. Um, to the one side, we have um, two houses, uh, and to the other side, we have five or six. Um, and this is kind of in the middle, and we have no sense of what is to happen with those two houses on the one side and the four or five houses on the other. Um, so it seems to me that if we're, you know, serious about planning, then we ought to be thinking about, uh, you know, what's what's the whole street going to look like when we're all finished and how do we make that happen? Um, and I don't think um, this addresses that um, at all. So that's my uh, big concern. And I think um, Councillor Harvey um, raises really good questions because um, I think we have that same situation in every one of our wards where we have existing uh, one story, two story houses. Um, and is it appropriate to put um, a four story building right in the middle of it? Um, and recognize that, you know, we are looking at intensification. Um, but I, it's in my view, I think we have to do intensification, and we have to do it right. Um, and it needs to fit into the neighborhood. Um, and when you look at the pictures that uh, Councillor Harvey uh, demonstrated, uh, you see nothing there that is higher than three stories, um, all in that area. Um, so um, it seems to me that that's the kind of context that this, this proposal fits into. And I think um, when I look at Councillor Harvey's proposed amendment, I think that's what exactly he's trying to do is to try to make it fit um, much better than what the proposal was. And he's um, listened to the neighborhood and tried to um, figure out uh, what is a reasonable uh, development uh, scenario um, as opposed to what the developer might be asking for. Because um, the neighbors have to live with it forever, the developer moves on. Um, so my inclination at this moment is, yeah, we could turn it down um, and just vote against uh, approval altogether. But I'm not sure that that really moves the, 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 the ball forward. I, I'm much more inclined to um, go with the amendments and um, see where that takes us, because I think it gives us, um, it, it gives the developer a, a real sense of this is what, uh, what council is thinking about and uh, considers to be appropriate in this area. So um, I, I'm, 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 I think that the compromise that uh, the councillor has provided is, is a reasonable one. Yeah, I'll just be brief. Um, I'm, I'm in support. I know that this has been a, a pretty uh, uh, intense uh, job for Councillor Harvey to, to, to work through this. And, you know, especially from the aerial view of where the pools are and how close that would be and having a rooftop terrace, like looking into your pool, it would just be, it would be really heartbreaking. So um, I could keep on going, but I'm going to keep it there with that I support this. And I agree, Councillor Ritma, it's kind of showing, you know, we need to still keep things reasonable, uh, especially in areas that are, aren't even intensification areas yet. So, a question for Councillor Harvey. I don't, maybe I missed it, but do you know how many units this is going to allow? You talked about units per hectare, but how many units? Would this, it was 46 now. How many would this allow? Do you know? Your amendments. Yeah, through uh, through you, Mayor Lehman, to uh, Deputy Mayor Ward, uh, it puts them at the top of the allowable units per hectare at 53 units per hectare, um, and uh, with this being 0.64 of a hectare, uh, the, when you do the math, it would allow up to uh, 34 units uh, instead of the proposed 46. 
Okay. Um, and the next question, I had a specific question about a number K, about the height of the fence. Where is that coming from? I mean, that's new completely. There wasn't anything about a fence in the original staff report, was there? Councilor Harvey? Through you, Mayor Lehman to Deputy Mayor Ward. Yeah, there is nothing uh, specific that I recall in the staff report about this. Again, this comes back to uh, the discussions uh, when I was a part of that meeting uh, back in December, um, where discussions around uh, privacy concerns uh, and uh, there was discussion around uh, the residents along Redfern um, pre preferring a, a fence that would be uh, at least seven feet, uh, seven feet tall. Um, and then obviously there was concern about uh, who would uh, maintain this fence that's required because of this uh, being a new development uh, that is going to uh, be in the middle of existing homes. So that, that's where that amendment came from. Okay, um, I guess I have a question for staff. I believe our current bylaw doesn't allow fences over two meters. Is that correct? Does somebody on staff know? Through you, Mayor Lehman, to Deputy Mayor Ward, we actually do allow them. It's just they have to be set back. They're treated as a um, as an accessory structure, so they have to be set back from the property line. Okay, and that would be the case in this one, I'm assuming. Uh, through you to Council Harvey, I believe you'd be looking for it on the property line, um, not set back in from the property line. It would have to be 0 0.3 meters from the lot line, and it would be considered a... Uh, an accessory structure. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Yes, that uh, that was the understanding in those discussions that, uh, especially because of the the ownership being uh, retained by uh, this new condo uh, board that would exist after the homes are built, uh, that yes, it would have to be built uh, just inside the property line. Okay, and last thing is, it's sort of a comment and a question. And I mean, I actually like seeing these specific things before us. And in fact, I've, I've had a co conversation with Councillor Harvey on the weekend. I encouraged him to do something. I, I'd be more comfortable if we actually directed this to staff to say, can you comment on this and, and put it back to, to come up with a new proposal with these parameters. We're kind of approving a development tonight without any of the staff report that goes with it. And I guess I'd feel more comfortable if we were actually referring this back to staff, say, here are our parameters. We don't want anything more than 10 meters. We want these setbacks, this density, come back to us with the report. I guess it bothers me that we're kind of doing this tonight and we're not sure of all the consequences of maybe some of the things we're doing. So I'm a little uncomfortable passing it tonight. I know we can always, at council in next week or two weeks, we can always refer it back to staff, but I don't know if Councilor Harvey wanted to comment on that of whether we want to have a new staff report or we just want to make these amendments tonight? Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Actually, I'd, I, I would actually uh, have to ask uh, the clerk or Miss Banfield a procedural uh, question on this because uh, I'll be quite honest with you, I haven't crossed this path yet. We have a, uh, a, a positive staff report recommending the, uh, the proposal uh, that was brought forward by the applicant. And obviously I've brought uh, several amendments forward to, uh, to reduce the, uh, the height and the density. Um, are, are they even permitted to come up with a new staff report with these new parameters? Uh, if that's the case, I'm definitely supportive of it. I'm just not sure if we're uh, procedurally allowed to do that. Um, thank you, Mayor Lehman and two members of the planning committee. Uh, council can direct anything back to staff with the parameters. So if you want to direct staff to prepare a new report with the recommendations, um, that, can be, that can be done. Um, and Ms. Banfield um, had just sent me a message that that, that this can, um, in her opinion, this could also be done. Just so you're aware of process, uh, the referral motion will come to city council. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, you know, we may well hear from the applicant, we may hear from the community or otherwise at city council at that, at that date. Um, but for tonight, uh, what you would be doing, we would be ending debate now if uh, the referral motion carries and it would be to refer the matter back to staff uh, with the parameters that uh, have been outlined in Councillor Harvey's amendment. That's clear. Section of the, the planning committee report comes to council. Anyone can make a deputation on it. And uh, so that may well be the applicant. I would expect under the circumstances, they will probably want to come and let us know what they think. Uh, and uh, we may well have uh, others who want to come and let us know what they think at uh, council at that point. Uh, but for tonight, this would it would um, it would end the discussion for now. Okay, clear. Okay, 
And I'll call the question. Those in favor of the referral motion, please indicate. Opposed? Uh, I'm also opposed. So that does carry, and that's eight uh, to three. The matter will come back to the council where general public will again have an opportunity to express their views. That was the update from the recent planning committee meeting. Goodbye.